here to dive into industry trends with leading ETF experts. This is ETF Spotlight with Nina Mishra. Hello and welcome to ETF Spotlight. I'm your host, Nina Mishra. My guest today is Dan Ives, Managing Director at Wedbush Securities. Dan has been covering the software and broader technology sector for more than two decades. So we are talking about big tech and cloud computing. Dan, welcome back on the show. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Okay, so let's start with the big tech earnings. And these earnings were better than expected. Uh, these stocks have done quite well this year again. Uh, particularly Microsoft and Google have done very well this year. And all these uh, technology giants, they benefited from COVID-driven trends. And they became bigger and stronger since the start of the pandemic. So uh, let's start with your thoughts on big tech earnings, uh, which all these companies reported recently. Yeah, I think they're stronger, getting stronger. And we're seeing that trend throughout earnings for Q4 from all the tech stalwarts, fang names, and, and really driven Microsoft, Google, and others, and even AWS on the cloud story. I think we're continuing to just see the fundamental drivers, not just on the consumer side, but on the enterprise side, continue to accelerate, not just in the COVID pandemic, environment, but just more and more companies on the digital transformation are accelerating their strategies. And I think cloud continues to be front and center. We only think we're about a third of the way through this transformational trillion dollar opportunity, which is front and center in this market. Very interesting. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about Apple in particular, because you have been bullish on Apple for a long time. And uh, last time we spoke, you said uh, Apple is best positioned to win from the 5G super cycle theme. Uh, so talk to us a little bit more about Apple's uh, recent uh, quarter, which was probably the best quarter Apple had uh, in its history, and your outlook for Apple. Yeah, with Apple, it's really been about the super cycle thesis for iPhone 12, and obviously a significant amount of hype coming in and, and Cook and Cupertino, they didn't just meet the hype, they beat it. And we're right now looking at an iPhone 12 cycle that looks like it's going to handily exceed the record iPhone units from 2015, which was $231 million. It's an unparalleled demand trend that we're seeing for Apple, not just in the U.S., but in China and around the globe, on the iPhone 12 5G theme. And that, what that's really doing today, you have about 40% of the install base that has not upgraded their phone in three and a half years. The combination of a 5G phone with what we believe is just a transformation opportunity is transforming into a super cycle. And, and I believe six to nine months from now, we're looking at a $3 trillion mark cap for Apple. And I think what they showed in numbers is that it's not just hype, it's the reality. In terms of super cycle and a further re-rating from the services business, which we believe is worth one to one point two trillion alone. Wow, three trillion dollars market cap. Very exciting. And another stock you like a lot is Tesla. And Tesla is up 25% this year so far after a 700% gain in 2020. And uh, I saw that you recently raised his, uh, your price target for Tesla to $950. And you also said that uh, shares could be worth $1,250 in a bull case scenario. Talk to us more about Tesla, your uh, price target and outlook for the company. Yeah, it's a golden age for EVs. Electric vehicles, only 3% of overall automobiles is EV today. We think that goes to 10% by 2025. And in the EV market, it's Tesla's world. Everyone else is paying rent. And I think we're seeing that in terms of half a million you know, deliveries that really set the bar for this past year. I think now they're on a trajectory to be upwards of a million units by 2022. China continues to be the hearts and lungs of the bull story for Tesla. And that's playing out. And more and more, it's the efficiency and the profitability, the red inks in the rearview mirror 
The street continues to value Tesla, which I strongly subscribe to, not as an auto company, but a disruptive technology vendor. And I think as you start to look at the market opportunity over the coming years, I believe there's north of a thousand dollar stock, and it's a big enough ocean for more than one boat. I think you're going to see an EV cycle that plays out that's really unrivaled. And even some of the traditional car manufacturers like GM and others now going all in on EVs. And just lastly, I'd say the political backdrop, it's Goldilocks, especially in the U.S. with the Biden administration and Blue Senate. I think we see a green tidal wave, which is just another catalyst for Tesla going forward. Very interesting. Now let's talk about cloud business. Uh, so we saw rising uh, power of cloud uh, from the recent results of Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. And Amazon, which uh, reported yesterday, uh, it is the current leader in cloud computing, they in fact announced that uh, the cloud boss will take over the role of CEO now, which again shows cloud's rising power. And in fact, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella ran Microsoft's cloud business before his elevation to CEO's job. Uh, Microsoft is world's largest, second largest uh, cloud computing uh, company. And we saw that uh, their Azure revenue grew 50% uh, in the last quarter. Now, Google, which is the third largest player in the cloud computing market, is also spending a lot on its cloud business. Uh, so tell us who will win this cloud war of these three tech giants. It's a great point, and I really view it as a cloud arms race that's going on today, going after the trillion dollars of spend. You know, for many years, there was only one player in town, it was AWS, and, and Andy Jazzy, who's the next CEO of Amazon, taking over the, the titan and legend Bezos, really is, is the origin, and really why cloud is where it is today. But I believe Microsoft is gaining more and more share versus Amazon. And you're seeing Google in a, you know, a clear and a far third, and I think what's starting to happen is more enterprises doing this digital transformation going into Microsoft's backyard. And I think it also speaks to why Andy's now CEO of Amazon. Amazon is doubling down on its cloud strategy, recognizes where we are in terms of this market. And that's why Andy got the nod for CEO to run Amazon. He's sort of been groomed for that position. But I think when you look at him, you look at Nadella, you look at what happened with Curry and at Google, it just speaks to where we are in cloud. It's really the epicenter of the transformation that we're seeing across enterprise and the consumer. I think what you're seeing with these growth rates, it's, it's worth noting because it's not just about the growth. It's about some of the underlying market share gains. And I think Microsoft has an opportunity here to really gain more and more traction versus the likes of Amazon. And this is going to be an arms race. And I think it's just starting, especially with Andy now at the helm going up against Nadella and Microsoft with their crosstown rivals. This would definitely be a very interesting race to watch. Now, talking about uh, the outlook for big tech in general, you know, as you mentioned earlier, these companies uh, benefit from the digital transformation that is going on, and they are becoming bigger and stronger. But do you think there is uh, a regulatory, rising regulatory risk for these companies, particularly uh, because now Democrats Democrats control both the House and the Senate. Uh, what, what is your outlook for these companies and in 2021? And of all these uh, big tech stocks, which is your favorite uh, stock, which has the best outlook for this year? Yeah, in terms of regulatory, both in the U.S. as well as in Europe, they're going to Fang names continue being the crosshairs of regulators. You know, if you look in this COVID environment, the strong have gotten stronger. Just a brighter spotlight in terms of regulatory, monopolistic, and potential breakup. I do believe a blue Senate definitely elevates the risk of breakups, but I think right now it's a contained risk, unless we have pure legislative changes, which doesn't look likely. But it's going to be a headwind, and you're going to see more and more of a focus, not just for Amazon, but, but for all the FANG 
names outside of Netflix because of what we're seeing in this market in terms of getting stronger, not just on the consumer side, but on the enterprise side. And I, and I think that's a discount investors right now view as a contained risk. You're going to continue to see that more of a headline risk, more hearings. Of course, the DOJ uh, is more and more of a focus, especially on Google and others. But that continues to be the biggest risk for the broader tech sector. That's something that I think investors are not fully baking in, but that's an elevated risk as we move throughout the next call, 12 to 18 months. Our favorite tech name on large cap firmly continues to be Apple. I mean, I believe this is a name on a super cycle, on a re-rating thesis, where we are. I think this is a $3 trillion market cap. And I think it's one from an upside perspective, continues to be significant. 175 being our base case, bull case being 225. I also think regulatory tends to be maybe least at risk of the large tech stalwarts relative to the likes of a Facebook, a Google, or an Amazon. So that's why our favorite name continues to be that company in Cupertino, Apple. Excellent. Now, talking about the cloud computing market in particular, uh, of course, uh, cloud computing uh, was a trend. Uh, we were seeing a lot of growth in the cloud computing market even before the pandemic because uh, cloud computing is uh, more efficient, it is cheaper, it is safer. So companies are preferring to use cloud computing. Uh, but of course, all these trends they got accelerated during the pandemic. Uh, now, with the wider rollout of vaccines, we will return to some sort of normalcy later this year, and people will return to offices, maybe go to mall for shopping, uh, kids will return to school. So in the post-pandemic world, what kind of growth do you see for the cloud computing market? Yeah, and I think it's important to differentiate the front office applications the Zooms, the Slacks, the Citrix, even Microsoft Teams versus the back end infrastructure. I think you'll see a moderation of the front end applications, the Zooms, the Slacks, which got acquired by Salesforce and some others. But I believe the hearts and lungs of cloud, the back end infrastructure, the shift to cloud, we only believe we're about a third of the way through. 35% of workloads are in the cloud today. We now accelerate another 1,000 bips to 45% this year and 55% next year. So that's why when I look at cloud and the COVID environment, I believe it's accelerated the growth rates by one to two years. You'll see a moderation of front-end applications, maybe across parts of the cloud ecosystem. But when we look at the platforms, the infrastructures behind the scenes, I ultimately think that did that digital transformation is just actually accelerating. So, which is why that continues to be the area of cloud we're most bullish on going into the next 12 to 18 months. Excellent. Now, let's talk about your ETF. Uh, it is the Wedbush ETF MG Global Cloud Technology ETF, ticker symbol IVES, I V E S. And uh, this uh, actually used to focus on drone technology earlier, and it's it changed its uh, index and focus in April last year, and it has done very well since then. It's up more than 80% since April 2020. Tell us uh, more about this ETF. Yeah, I mean, if I even go back the last few years, and, and really in my career in 20 plus years in tech, I, I, I've never seen a trend that I've been more excited about and the growth supports what I think is ultimately a trillion dollar market than cloud. And along with Wedbush and ETFMG, going back even two years ago, it was talking about putting together an ETF that could really capture a big area of spend in cloud. You know, many ETFs focus on a lot of the large cap names, you know, many of which we're bullish on, but, but I think that only captures about 50, 60% of the spend. So we really wanted to put together a differentiated ETF focus on SMID cap, but not the applications, really the platform, the infrastructure behind the scenes and an international exposure and felt like there was a real big opportunity to capture that market. And the, the 50 to 60 names that we've put together over the last year 
It's 50% international, and it captures what we believe is a significant portion of that trillion dollars of spend over the next decade that I think many others don't go after. And I think it's important as an investor, you want to have exposure to the large cap cloud name, the Microsofts, the Amazons, and others. But I also think it's important to be focused on the SMID cap platforms and applications that are really going to be facilitating this next leg of cloud spend. And that's what we capture in the ETF to really give investors that opportunity. And we're very excited about the product. So I'm looking at the ETF. It focuses on four areas of the cloud tech ecosystem, uh, infrastructure storage, then software as a service, cybersecurity, and then consumer and business cloud-based applications. Tell us more about those four areas. Yeah, when you think about the four areas, I think it's really important to focus on those first two, the, the, the platforms, the infrastructure, and, and really what I would use the hearts and lungs of cloud. The applications ultimately, we're not on Zoom today. We're not doing Skype if it's not for a lot of the infrastructure behind the scenes. A call center can't be in cloud if it's not for a company like Nice Systems, which is one of the leading providers of cloud-based call center technology, which is one of the, the top holdings of the ETF. You look at storage areas like Dropbox, Box, NetApp. See, these are core components of the cloud build out. And that's really what we focus on. But it's not just U.S. Because I think a big piece of spend is going to be across Asia with what I believe is in China. Today, they are behind the U.S. probably one to two years in terms of the cloud build out. So a big piece, about half of our international exposure is China and Japan. And that's a very important market for investors to be focused on in terms of what we really have uncovered, some of the gems and some of the enablers of this next paradigm of cloud computing, not just in the U.S., but globally. So as you mentioned, the tech giants, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, which are the biggest players in the cloud uh, computing market, but they are not pure play cloud companies. They are not included in, in this ETF. Uh, you focus more on the emerging gems. Uh, and I'm looking at the top holdings, Kingsoft Cloud Holdings, GTS Holdings, Elastic Nice, you talked a little bit about that. Then Open Text, MongoDB, these are among the top holdings um, in the CTF. I also see Cloudflare, Datadog. Talk to us a little bit about some of the top holdings that you like a lot. Yeah, I think, well, Nice Systems is, is a top one. And I think that really speaks to call centers today are only halfway through the shift to cloud and nice is really one that captures that capability and really facilitates it and i i think it's a good example what we see with companies like kingsoft and elastic that are really facilitating the infrastructure and platform build outs of the cloud not just in the us but when you look at kingsoft what we're doing in asia and i think it's important to have the companies that are really facilitating this next leg of spend. And then of course, there's the analytics piece and really the platform around big data and what I view as AI. And when you think about some of these companies like a Datadog, you look at some of the other analytics-based cloud companies, these are what really view as the next paradigm of cloud as we look forward, companies like Anaplan. And these are ones, like you've said, they're not the large cap names that everyone knows. And that's not what we're trying to accomplish in this ETF. It's really going after SMID cap global platforms and infrastructure. That's what I believe is going to be a big piece of the trillion dollars of spend internationally that we want to capture in the ETF. Definitely a very interesting product. Switching gears a little bit, I was interested in your thoughts um, also on the recent market action and uh, particularly the rise in retail investing. In Reddit and everything that we've seen with Robinhood, I view it as a new market force where the individual investor broadly is not no longer at the kids' table. I think you're really starting to see them get more and more market influence 
even though the last called seven to ten days has been off the charts and the you know a bit parabolic and the double edged sword. I think it does show that this is not a fad. I think the individual investors through the Reddit, Robinhood, social media is starting to even become in some ways more sophisticated, but more powerful in the market. And I don't necessarily view that as a bad thing. I think it's a good thing overall from a transparency and diversification distribution of investments across the board, not just institutional. But I think it just shows that this is a market force that's going to add to volatility. We're going to go through these periods like we've seen in terms of some short covering and others. But I think the overarching theme here is the individual investor it really starts to gain more of a seat at the table with institutional investors that have really continued to dominate the market over the last two to three decades. Definitely a very interesting trend. And that's all we have time for today, Dan. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks for having me. So that was Dan Ives of Redbush. Now, cloud computing is an area which has seen exponential growth and continues to see that kind of growth. And that is why these stocks and ETFs have done so well. In addition to the ETF by Dan Ives, there are three more cloud computing ETFs available to investors. There's one by the First Trust. It's called the First Trust Cloud Computing ETF, ticker symbol SKYY. That was the first cloud computing ETF. And uh, it tracks a modified equal weighted index of cloud companies. Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet are among its top holdings. Then there's one by GlobalX. It's called the Global X Cloud Computing ETF, ticker symbol CLOUD, C-L-O-U. This holds companies uh, which are positioned to benefit from the increased adoption of cloud computing. And while Amazon, Microsoft, and Alphabet are included in the portfolio, the fund's top holdings are faster growing companies like Twilio, Zoom Video, and then this one by Wisdom Tree. It's called the Wisdom Tree Cloud Computing ETF, ticker symbol WCLD. This tracks an equal weighted index of emerging cloud companies. And then there is uh, the latest entrant uh, is the one uh, by ETFMG, the one which is managed by Dan, which holds undercover gems of cloud technology. And looking at the performance uh, since Ives' inception, uh, WCLD is the best performer. It has gained over 100% in that period. Ives has also done very well. It is up about 82% during this period. Then Clow is up a little more than 70%, about 70%. 2% and SKYY is also up about 69%. Uh, please visit the ETF section of Zax.com if you want to learn more about these stocks and these ETFs. And thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave us a rating on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. And also make sure to subscribe so that you do not miss any episode. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please email podcast at sax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identify and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.